Hello everyone and welcome back to another review from the Dwarven Tavern. I am Dr. Jeff Rolls, your host, and this time as a departure from our usual, uh, I don't know, we've been doing a lot of Pathfinder lately and uh, a lot of Paizo stuff because they're awesome folks and they send me a lot of stuff to review. I'm going to take a bit of a reprieve from that and explain or review this book. Uh, this is the Traveler Central Supply Catalog from Mongoose Publishing. And uh, they're also great guys. I, I, I love the guys at Mongoose because they are, they're good folks. I mean, it's nice to have good stuff and good material, but it's even better to be nice people because that's what it's all about. And these guys are really cool. Very specifically, Mark Miller and uh, Matthew. Forgive me, uh, I don't know if it's Sprang or Sprange, but I've met them both and they're, they're really cool guys in, in, in addition to being great uh, game designers. I like them. So, uh, Traveler, Central Supply. What is it? Well, it's a, uh, it's a catalog of stuff. It's, a, it's an arms and equipment guide. It goes for $49.99 at all your finer retailers. Actually, it probably goes for less at your finer ones. It would go for more than that at your less than fine. So, what is the book? Well, it's uh, it's exactly what it says it is. It's a uh, it's a it's a catalog. It's in a catalog format, which I think is incredibly cool. And uh, one of the coolest thing is the uh, the the ads uh, ads in the book throughout. <laughs> Uh, for for example, this one, uh, breaking news, mega sale for the best deals in the Marches, Aries, Quaid, Guns, Goods, and Beyond. Fully registered trader of the Central Supply Catalog by the Traveler's Aid Society. Which, as you know, if you're a traveling player, that it's a Traveler's Aid Society is the uh, overarching throughout, woven through. I don't know what's with the interpretive dance, but there you go. And it has the uh, Varger Service Guarantee stamp. So, Varger's. All customers who quote Aries Mega Sale get an additional 10% off all purchases. So it's really cool. It's it's immersive. That's the, that's the thing that uh, I've I've often mentioned throughout reviews and 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 various other discussions of various games and the like. I have often stated that immersion is one of, if not the most important aspect of gaming because, primarily because Walt Disney actually made me think. He said at one point in time that nothing is as immersive to a moviegoer than a incredible soundtrack. And as we know, or should know, or maybe you disagree, I don't know, but as is widely accepted, an immersive soundtrack I mean, music, it, it touches us and it reaches into us and it pulls out things from our past, our memories, or it sets the precedence for new memories. And immersion is, it, it gets you into the game. This, you can't have a musical book, a soundtrack in a book, so they do so with images because a picture's worth a thousand words and very few songs have lyrics that long. So these illustrations with the various for instance, this uh, on page nine here, this ad is, it's an ad for the uh, TL6, the Tech Level 6 Assault Shotgun with <laughs> this big 70 caliber rounds, which that 12 gauge is 70 caliber, uh, I believe, if memory serves. If it does, I would like an espresso with coconut. And also it has a uh, 01101001010 as a barcode and that, that equates to uh, 1,682 for whatever reason. So the, the ads get you into the flavor of it to make a long story short. Too late. And the book covers, and I'll, I'll go through the table of contents here briefly, uh, the introduction, the equipment availability, new rules, personal protection, survival gear, electronics, computers and software, robots, tools and engineering, medical supplies, personal augmentation, home comforts, close and personal, self-defense, heavy weaponry for the discerning weapon specialist, ammunition, and sighting aids and accessories. Now, these are all very important things for your character to survive, and it covers very well. The format of the pages are delineated very clearly. It's very easy to read, and that is not to be confused with dumbed down, because it is not dumbed down. 
it is just written really clearly. And I know about clear writing because I've written enough freaking term papers in my life that I can, I can read one as well. So equipment availability. Availability is delineated by, delineated, that's the word of the day. Availability, whether it's considered to be anywhere from highly specialized to a world at the other end, if it's highly specialized, it may not be available so you have a die, a die modifier of, of minus one on your roll to see if it's available. If the world population is 12 or better, then you have a die modifier of plus two. So, and then there's a lot of things in between from, well, actually the item's tech level is 10 or more steps away from the world's tech level is minus four. And the world population is zero, it is also minus four. Zero does not mean zero, it means O as in, well, it does mean it is the, the number zero but uh, that doesn't mean no population, I think. I'll have to look. <laughs> but the world population is zero, it's minus four. Then you can have all the way up to plus two for if the world has H-I, H-T, I-N, and or R-I trade codes, which are high levels of trading. And the world, if the world population is 12 or better, then you also have high a higher chance of finding the weapon. So the referee's fiat, the referee, and Lyric and I had a podcast on the Table 5 podcast about that. We call it Dungeon Master, even if we're playing a cowboy campaign, just because of our training. Uh, in addition, a referee may apply his own modifier of minus three to plus three, just depending on the individual circumstances. So uh, I'm glad that they reminded the, uh, the reader of that because that's, it's true. I mean, you can you could add flat out deny it or say, well, yeah, of course it's here. Being the referee, you have the the option of doing all that stuff. So minus three to plus three is a it's a good uh, that's a good spectrum to uh, to allow. Then uh, tech level and law level, etc., are also factors, uh, and uh, you can use your streetwise checks or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Black market is also a possibility for buying and selling weapons. And then it goes through the category of unrestricted, military use only, civilian use, et cetera, et cetera. So it also, it does all that. Law enforcement response for uh, negative effects on streetwise checks. And it goes, I mean, it just goes through this whole process of discovering whether or not the weapon's available and how you can go about getting it. And again, once again, it, it Traveler departs from, because you know, it, it, there's no levels in Traveler and there's no experience points. And uh, you begin gameplay as soon as you start rolling up your character. That's wonderful, I love that. Because it, it begins to be immersive from the, the first roll of the dice and it continues throughout the game, which, you know, that's why Traveler is my favorite science fiction sci-fi role playing. Even though you could very well use Traveler as a, because of the various tech levels, tech level zero, Stone Age, anything from Stone Age up, there you go. So it doesn't have to be just sci-fi. It can be Victorian or Camelot or whatever, Duck World. <laughs> It's traveling, man. So, new rules it goes through. Artillery, artillery weapons shoot projectiles along its ballistic trajectory, allowing them to lob shots into targets that are out of sight. Yes, that is true. In holding with that, it, if it has the artillery heading, then it's a it's a, an indirect fire weapon. Here's, here's a heading that I, I think might be a little bit redundant, even though it, that's not what it means. A weapon can be dangerous. <laughs> like, okay, well that's, that's, that's right. No, the, the, this weapon can be as lethal to the traveler using it as his intended target. If an attack roll is made by this weapon with an effect of minus five or worse, it explodes like a blunderbuss that you've overpacked. Its damage is inflicted upon the traveler while firing it and the weapon is rendered inoperable. So if you get a dangerous weapon, just be aware that you could blow your own head off. Fire, this weapon sets a target on fire, causing damage every round after the initial attack. The target can only be set on fire by one fire weapon at a time. Obviously, since you're on fire, you can't be set on fire again until the first fire subsequently goes out. So forth. So there are a number of new rules. One use, single use weapons, silent weapons. Love si suppressors and silencers and weapons that don't, don't go bang. Weapons that go are some of the coolest. Even in video games, I love that. 
I don't know why. Um, I guess it's because I'm, I'm a musician and it, I, I value my hearing somewhat more than I used to. <laughs> Playing on stage for years, man. I got that tinnitus going on and whew, man. So uh, with the new rules out of the way, then we get into the actual catalog, which uh, the catalog is incredibly cool. It has pictures of every single thing. And you know how I am for good illustrations. And the illustrations aren't, they're not photorealistic, but the artwork is, it's kind of comic booky, kind of cartoony, but it's, it's not like silly cartoony. It's uh, realistic cartoony. It's like, it's like actual, you know, comic book stuff and like superhero stuff. And I really, really like the artwork. So that gets big pluses for me. Anti-energy armor. I feel like I'm wearing that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing anti-energy underwear. Then you've got uh, stuff like Reflect and Natural Sheaths and all these armors, uh, a vac suit for boarding. And it has, because when you can see the armor, when you can see the picture of the armor, then you can imagine your character wearing said armor, such as the hostile environment vac suit and the explosive ordnance disposal suit. Very, very cool. The pressure sleeve. Is that's a whole body thing. It's not just a sleeve you put on. It's come on, man. Come on, do it. Come on. Your sleeve is saying that to you. The Psy Enhanced Combat Armor. And and again, when uh, Lyric and I were talking about favorite classes, I one of my favorite things is the Psy thing. Psionics, man. So all of these, all of these, uh, these suits of armor. It, it has the stats of each we of each weapon of each uh, suit, uh, such as its protection, its tech level, the rads, the kilograms, the you know, how much it cost, and the required skill. Uh, for instance, in order to wear the mechanical carapace. It gives you plus eight protection at tech level nine or mechanical suit. And then the carapace is a, it's a little bit easier to put on because you only need a vac suit one. Whereas the mechanical, you need to have vac suit two. It's a lower tech level by three than the carapace. Te uh, carapace is a 12 and the, uh, the mechanical is a nine. And so it just makes sense that it's a little clunkier, a little less efficient, a little less, uh, where I'm looking for intuitive to put on. And so there you go. Uh, the powered plate, it has two different t tech levels. The tech level 10 is a vac suit one to put on tax uh, or to, to, to don properly to where it works. Because these, these are not just, these are not just, you know, sweaters and such and jeans that you put on. These are very, these are very complicated, very complex pieces of machinery that intertwine to make a, a new and better you and protect you. Powered plate is, it's got protection of 18. So it's like, ain't, ain't nothing getting through there. Uh, but it only, re it's tech level 14 and it only requires a back suit of zero. So if you've got like a jack of all trades, then you can wear that. You can put all that stuff on. So if you're rolling up your character and you get the option for back suit, just know that if you turn that down for a something like carousing <laughs> or something that your very life could depend on being able to put on that suit because if there's nobody there to help you then you're not going to get it on properly so just a little side note there modifications the modification section after reading through this it's it's very cool for example it has a uh, you can get a modification of a friend or foe hud several tiny scanners and cameras implanted in the armor key track of registered friendly transponders the hud itself comes equipped with its own transponder so you don't accidentally shoot yourself thinking you are an enemy and marks targets without transponders as potential enemies this information shows up on a visor based hud allowing the traveler to know the exact location of allies and enemies within his line of sight or up to a kilometer away whichever is greater as well as avoiding potential friendly fire incident this system grants a, a die modifier plus one to any tactics check the traveler makes so yeah i mean it, all of these uh modifications and there are a few of them there are two pages of them and uh, it goes everywhere from uh, additional padding to the uh, thruster pack, like jump jets. So they've, they've covered quite a bit, and it's uh, it, it's quite minefield boots, submarine functionality, magnetic grapples. You can be like uh, uh, Metroid up in there with Samus. You know, 
and so forth. So thumbs up for that. Then it has a, uh, a section on battle dress, which are the actual armor armors, for crying out loud. The uh, artillery battle dress is more heavily armored than standard and has heavier servos that enable it to carry powerful integral weapons. However, it is too large and clumsy to be hand to use handheld weapons normally, and any attempt to do so will result in a bane being applied to all attack rolls. You'd be molded by it, steeped in it. So the artillery battle dress, the tech level 14 is uh, it gives you plus 29 protection. Whereas, uh, oh, let's see, I think that's the uh, the greatest suit that is the biggest suit the least protection you can get from full battle dress i believe is 22. the ceramic battle dress gives you plus uh tech level 13 gives you a plus 22 to your protection so anytime you get your nope i'm sorry lies uh the scout battle dress has a protection of uh, plus 20. so if you get your hands on a suit of battle dress you've got you've got a lot of protection there regardless then it you know it has without going through each individual item it covers a very wide range of armors i mean just just the armor so it goes from the the armors to the the, uh, the battle dress the first section is archaic half plate breastplate full plate i mean it's actual plate mail actual plate armor then you've got a section on armor just armor armor like ceramic and cloth and the like then we have anti-energy armor which is like uh ablat which is ablative uh, armor that burns away with lasers but it protects you from lasers uh electronics suite non-powered suits uh then it goes to atmospheric protection arctic and cold environments desert and arid environments marine environments mountains and cliffs vacuum environments general survival gear okay after the armor we get into the general survival gear and it is replete if you will with various gear i mean it looks like a, it looks like a pro bass shop <laughs> or, a, or a dick's sporting goods looking uh, set of uh, future you know what they what that's going to look like in a hundred years from now so you, you've got things like the protein tap uh, the internal combustion generator which is just a straight up ring ding ding Micro turbine generators, a pocket saw. You don't want that coming open while you're jogging. Uh, the infinite rope, it, very much like the uh, the the liquid rope in uh, Star Wars. You know, the kind that when Luke pulled the thing out and the grapple and threw it and swung across the thing while stormtroopers were <laughs> shooting at birds or whatever. The uh, infinite rope is stored in liquid form within a device looking like a caulk gun. It's a bacterium binding to itself with amazing strength and flexibility. When needed, the trigger on the gun is pulled and a length of rope is produced. So, Spider-Man, right? And so forth. And then they've got prefabricated cabins, which I would love to have one of these suckers. And, and so forth. And then it has a whole list of electronics that you can use, such as the infrared electric torch, the PRIS binoculars, portable radiation imaging system is what PRIS stands for, light intensifier goggles, sci finder goggles, which who you that's if you've got a campaign that you're against scions for whatever reason you, you buy is that electronic binoculars, Geiger counters, then it has communications like transceivers and then it tells about the range, which is a thing that is sorely missing from a lot of sci-fi is uh, the, the minute details that some people like the details, some people don't. For instance, in Starfinder, the actual speeds of the ships and speed capabilities are not given because they say it's the narrative that is more important than the actual science behind it. And that was one of the few things that I actually disagreed with, uh, with the uh, with the Starfinder stuff, is that when you have actual scientific, when you science fiction, right? So you're you've got extra sci-fi stuff that has no science to back it. Even if the science is outlandishly crazy, it removes the suspension of disbelief for me personally. Uh, you may not want to bother with it. If so, that's fine because I, we always we reinforce this. It's your game. And that's the most important thing. So it has the range, for instance, a tech level five radio is five kilometers. Has a maximum range, tech level five though. Tech level 14 is regional. That's a radio transceiver, it's 500 kilometers. Laser transceivers is like 500, also 500 kilometers for that. And uh, that's just a radio transceiver. 
Um, they also have things like, well, I think it's a higher tech level than than what Traveler gets into. It's like, like 17 or 18, but the, the Ansible, uh, where it's quantum entanglement that works in, instantaneously across both spectrums, regardless of distance. So they have a, uh, the Ansible, the, the theory of the Ansible is to have a, a thing, a box with a quantum entangled set of, uh, like, a, like a quantum entangled transceiver, transducer and you talk into it and it hears the sound and the, it vibrates to your voice and then the other one that is also quantum entangled, no matter where it is in the universe, it also does that and then it picks up. So that's instant communication across any distance, literally any distance. That's, that's a cool thing, a little side note. Uh, then it goes through computers and software, which I think is very cool. In the old days of Traveler, computers, it really, really wasn't well known what computers could do because they were just they were brand new things and uh, it was like a meme i just saw about bill gates saying uh, in 1980 something he was saying uh, who knows what would what computers will be able to do in 30 years what wonders what marvels and then it showed a computer simulation of a thou of a hundred tyrannosaurus rex against ten thousand chickens <laughs> That's that's what marvels we have attained. It has a whole section on robots, such as the Centurion, the Astromech Droid, which is very much an R2D2 with a little with a little hand at his head going here. Protocol Droid. Oh my God, the Protocol Droid. Really? This is. I just I just noticed this. Uh, Astromech Droid, right next to the Protocol Droid. C3PO. Uh, sanitation Droid, which everyone should own one of those. And Utility Droids, and then. It has a, a whole section on tools and uh, everything. Everything has the same format. It's got its its uh, its faux serial number, and then it has the item, its tech level, how much it weighs, how much it costs, in the terms of tools, and all those things are all those things are very important. And it a uh, brief description thereof, and then a picture thereof. Except for things that don't really need pictures. Well, it does have the the shovel, the sledgehammer, the ice pick. I mean the uh, the the ice hammer where you and so forth, but uh, it doesn't actually it does. Hang on the next page, I'll be done. So yeah, it has it illustrates everything. It's got medical supplies uh, and with with ads. Break your limits. <laughs> Truth serum. Starlight drops. Radiation emergency applicator. Then it has a section on personal augmentation like the Aslan Cyberclaw, the combat arm, a crude prosthetic, uh, which is tech level three, like. You know, Cat Mayhab and his peg leg. Then the combat arm is an implant. It gives you an extra arm and so forth. And then it has a torso, head, augmentations, and, and various other options. And then, of course, the home comforts. You could get into that. I mean, it's it's immersive. It, it, it covers everything. Not everything is to get you prepared for the prepared for the field. Close and personal, bludgeoning weapons, the mace, the grab hammer, so forth. The arc field weapon, which is tech level 14, which is a uh, dense conductive fibers that are flooded with energy from a self-contained power pack, and it creates a plane of energy that can slice through nearly anything, which is akin to a lightsaber of a sorts. Then, of course, it has the side dagger and vibro blades and, and so forth. Very happy with this. And then it has self-defense of all the guns. Uh, I think guns are the biggest selection, the largest selection. Each one has a very cool illustration. It just <laughs> has an entire section for artillery, such as the black powder mortar. It's basically a bombard. And then the light howitzer which I carry one of those with me. Oh, I've got a, I've got a, a, a carry permit for the uh, light howitzer because you just never know. Uh, siege guns, these are things that are mounted on the floor or on a, a hard surface and so forth. The medium auto cannon, Vulcan machine gun, and so forth. Orbital defense cannons. Those, every household should have one of those. Uh, it has a range of five and 4 dB of damage. It costs 10,000 credits per magazine, and the magazine holds 20 shots. So if you've got a little bit of money, you live maybe in Dubai, and you want to uh, impress your neighbors, go to a wedding with your friendly neighborhood orbital defense cannon, you can do that. Then it's got rockets and missiles, gun combat weapons such as bolas and boomerangs, monofilament bolas. Oh, that's that's like predator stuff right there. Very cool. The breaching charge. It's got explosives and it ends up 
the book ends with sighting aids and accessories such as scopes and bayonets, chain drive bayonet, which that's that's very Warhammer again. Friend or foe safety. So if you accidentally point your gun at a friend if, if that has the from your HUD, if you accidentally point a gun at them because you're excited and you want to kill something, the gun, the safety will come on and you won't be able to fire. Which is uh, kind of dangerous if one of your friends actually is a spy or something and they betray you and you want to blow their brains all over the cabin of your new starship and you can't because your gun has a safety. We've got a gyro stabilizer for bulky weapons, heavy tripods, so forth and so on, holographic sights, laser sights, yeah, it makes you want to play. It makes you want to play. And then it goes to the index, which, you know, has everything in it. So, uh, this is, uh, of course, getting five axes for me because it is, it is well presented. It is not dumbed down. Very creative. It has a really good format. Very, very easy to read. And it's got a lot of stuff in it. The content is fantastic. So, again, that is the uh, Traveler Central Supply catalog from Mongoose Publishing. Goes for $49.99. And uh, look them up, Google Mongoose www.mongoosepublishing.com I believe and uh, and look them up and get this book to you for your collection because even though Traveler has uh, the uh, the uh, original core rule book has weapons and armor and stuff like that in it this book is uh, this is a is it just has <laughs> it has more and uh, like the uh, the dude's trying to sell me a microphone at uh, at Guitar Center and he said, this mic is, is really awesome. And I said, I already have one of these. And he said, yeah, but if you buy this one, you'll have two. I'm like, huh, that's a really good point. <laughs> so five axes, officially five for the Traveler Central Supply Catalog from Mongoose Publishing. And on that happy note, I am Dr. Jeff Goins, wishing for you to want for nothing but adventure. And on behalf of the entire cast and crew of the Dwarven Tavern, at first I feared it, then I charged and... Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. Met the 